Hey guys, Joe here, and here we are once again to talk about the little should I play mini series I have. So, should I play a high tier and the benefits and negatives? Now, last week I did do the little should I play a low tier, and it got quite a good, uh, quite a bit of good results. So, hopefully, you guys will enjoy this video just as much. And this does have a little bit less information because it doesn't have as much bullets, but hopefully, I can still give you quite enough information. It might be a little bit shorter. It might still be 10 minutes. I don't know. It'll be somewhere around there. But let's get this video started. Also, make sure to like and make sure to comment what type of video you want for next week. Any type of discussion can be about anything. I'll try to talk about it and just try to make it a little bit of an interesting topic that people want to hear. There we go. But let's get this started. Now, let's say some of the high tier benefits. Now, a lot of these will be pretty just. Well, that was easy to think about, but sometimes you just need to hear the stuff and you just need to hear it out loud by somebody else. You might have already thought about it, but sometimes you just need to hear it from somebody else. So let me go over some of these. Well, the first one is that, of course, you can win games a lot easier. Your character's high tier, a lot less end lag, at least with most of the high tiers. Uh, you usually have a projectile that can be pretty good. You can usually spam your moves. You can pretty much pressure shields really easily. You can get good grab combos. You can just win games a lot easier, and it's just easier to win a game. It just doesn't take as much skill, I would say. But at the same time, fighting at a very, very high level thing will still take just as much skill. But playing mid level or lower level will take a little bit less skill, and it's just a lot easier. Next thing is that you will do well a lot faster in all your tournaments, and you'll just become better a lot faster. Pretty much right as you pick them up, maybe a few hours after you pick them up, you'll become very good, especially with characters like Luigi that are very easy to play. You'll pretty much pick them up, a few hours later you'll be very good, maybe almost tournament level, no you not that well, but almost low tournament level where you can kind of do okay in a tournament. While playing a low tier would take a long time, so it does let you pick them up very fast, and if you want a new character very easily, very easy to pick up a high tier for most of the cases. Not all high tiers are easy, but most of them are. Now another, uh, another thing is that you can win very big tournaments with a high tier, which is something that you really can't do as much with a low tier. I mean, you can try. As we saw in EVO, there were some people that got close, but in the end, if you want to win a big tournament, if you want to become great, if you want to become the gods, you will definitely have to pick a high tier. It's just something that's kind of just there. I mean, sometimes you could get some upsets, but if you want to continuously win over and over and over again, you want to become just like part of a group, and you just want to win pretty much. If you want to win big stuff, you want to become the best player of the best, be the best you possible, you really have to pick a high tier in order to win these big tournaments. But winning big tournaments really isn't the main thing, like a lot of people really don't care way too much about that. So if you do want to win those though, this is definitely something good. It can also help you win your locals pretty much a lot easier. Next, you'll need a lot less practice to beat players playing a lot of low tiers, but at the same time, low tier players will have a lot of practice with your character, so it could be kind of hard, but let me get into this a little bit. So, pretty much, it'll take a lot less practice for you to beat them just because you have less lag. For example, if you're playing Sheik versus, like, a Donkey Kong, they really have to space really well, they have to do their, like, uh, backers really well, pretty much all their moves almost perfectly. Well, you can just throw out those forward airs and they have to shield them all, you can easily grab him, you can camp him. You can do a lot of stuff that you really can't beat, you can easily gimp him while you can get back onto the stage. You just have a lot more tools in your arsenal, which will really help you beat these lower middle tier characters, and just make you take a lot less practice. Now, against very high level, like high skill level, low tier characters, it can take a little bit more practice, but overall you should be able to beat most of them, that's why you're high tier. Now next, it is really hard to counter pick most of the time with your character. Most of the time, you have very good stages, like most of the stages are pretty good for you. At sometimes with people like Olimar, they'll be pretty bad on certain stages, but most of the time it's kind of hard to counter pick your character, because people like Sheik, people like Diddy Kong, uh, people like Susu Samus, people like Falcon, Mario, they're pretty much good at most of the stages, and it's really hard to counter pick them. Sure, you can go for something like Halberd or Delfino, but they're all actually okay on those stages most of the time, so it's really hard to counter pick them, which is a very good thing if you're playing a high tier. Next, you can be seen as a Smash God, just like Zero. You can be seen as the best of the best. You could be anyone. You are just the best. Now, you could do this with a low tier, but with a high tier, I mean, you're playing the high tier. You're the best. You beat everybody with a high tier. You outplay them. You use all your skill. And you're pretty much saying, I can beat you with the best character in the game. I'm the best player in this local area. And I can just beat you. No disrespect. And to the next point, you will get a lot of respect. Give out that respect and not be taken lightly. When you do bring out a low tier versus someone playing a high tier and you win, it can be a little bit disrespectful at some times. The opponent can feel a tiny bit disrespected, but at the same time, if you bring out a high tier versus a high tier and you win, the opponent can say, okay, that was a good match. It was a very fair match, very close, and overall, very good. At the same time though, some people really don't like fighting high tiers, 
so some people may not respect you as much because you are playing a high tier. Yeah, that's just something you're gonna have to take. But now that I'm talking about a little bit of these positives, a tiny bit of the negatives, I'm gonna go over the negatives. First one, getting into top 32 or just pretty much getting anything but top 8 in a local tournament and then about top 32 in a big tournament. If you get less than that, it really doesn't cut it. You're pretty much nothing. Because you are playing high tier, a lot of other people are playing the same exact character as you. As we saw from uh, Zero, pretty much, or not Zero, as Mr. R from Evo, a lot of people just didn't really care much about him, even though he got second place, just because uh, Zero just like completely wrecked him. So really, even getting that well, if you don't do well in the final matches, you'll just not be thought of as much, just because you're playing a high tier, and people just really won't care quite as much if you do win. That's just something you're gonna have to get used to. You can still care though. You can personally still care and love to win, but if you really want to get a lot of applause and stuff, playing a high tier may not be the best way for you. Next is that you will have to win in order to be praised. If you do a low tier and you win maybe one of the three matches in a set, people can be like, okay, that was pretty good. You know, you did okay. You played your low tier. You did well against the high tier. Good job. But if you win, uh, if you lose against a high tier and you're a high tier, they'll be like, okay, the other guy's better. End of story. And it can be a little bit hurtful sometimes if you're playing a high tier. If you want people to really want to praise you a little bit, but they won't. So really, if you want to get the praise, the low tiers may be a little bit easier to get praised. But, like, it's a lot, like, if you win with a high tier, you'll still get praised, but just low tiers are a lot easier, too, because even if you lose, sometimes they'll get praised still. If you like praise, which a lot of people do, low tiers can be a little bit easier on that. Next, a lot of people will hate you. If you saw something like Static Manny, who was playing Sonic and timing people out and doing stuff that was perfectly legal, people really hated to watch him. He had the matches go all the way through 8 minutes. Seeing Kaiki was kind of cheating, like, not cheating, but, you know, the way he was playing to just run away the whole time, up B all the game out, it felt like a little cheat, and just people were starting to hate him, people really didn't like watching him at Evo, and, I mean, it's perfectly legal, it's perfectly fine, but a lot of people just won't like you a lot of times if you do play these high tiers, and especially if you beat a low tier, sometimes they'll be like, well, that's just not a fair match, and they just won't respect you quite as much against some of those matches, so, a lot of times you will have to get used to the hate, but it is okay, if you can handle the hate, then it'll be fine, people can tease you a little bit, but it's really not way too bad, so it doesn't matter too much. Next, you'll fight a lot of minute, uh, a lot of mirror matches, which, many people hate fighting mirror matches, this is just something that's personal, maybe you love mirror matches, maybe you hate them. I'm putting this as a negative, because most of the time people don't like fighting mirror matches, they're kind of hard to do. But if you do like mirror matches, of course, pick a high tier, you'll be able to get a lot of mirror matches versus your character. A lot of complete skill matches, this is the one thing I like about mirror matches, it's all about skill. But, really, that's up to you if you like mirror matches. Next, it will take a long time to slowly and slowly improve the best player in the world. Right now, it's probably not in the world, uh, in the country is probably zero, but in the world it could be anybody from Japan and pretty much whatever. It'll take a long time to beat them with their best character as the high tier that they're playing if you're trying to beat them with uh, your best character, which is the same high tier. It can be really hard and it can just be hard to slowly improve. It's really hard to get past some of that just slow playing over and over and over again for hours. You get really boring, really repetitive, and a lot of times with low tiers, you really just kind of come to accept that you really can't beat the best of the best just because your character's not as good. But with a high tier, you know that you can beat the best. You know that you're playing their character and that you can beat them, which does, like, makes you get a little bit more motivated, but at the same time, it can kind of make you, like, know you should be winning them, but you aren't. So, really, it can make it a little bit harder. Next, you're not really improving the metagame for a lesser played character, so if you really want more characters to become competitive, you're not doing that, you're just keeping only like one or two good characters in the game. You're not helping the competitive uh, metagame for lesser played characters, which is good or bad. You might like more characters being played, you might like less because then it's easier to play your matches and you don't have to lose much matchups, so it's really up to you. Next, you do have a choice in which character, well, let me just play this. You don't have much of a choice in which character you pick. Pretty much, there's maybe uh, 20 good characters, which is still a pretty good choice, but there's about 20, maybe more, I don't know, 20 high tiers-ish, somewhere around that, and like melee there's like 10, but there's pretty much 20, 10 something high tiers that you can really pick if you do want to get to the top level, you want to win pretty much Diddy at Apex and then Sheik with Evo, these are some of the characters that you kind of had to pick if you did want to do really well. A lot of these characters didn't uh, get all the slots, but as you saw, they got really high and they pretty much won first and second place every single time, so that was one of the things. You really don't have as much of a choice if you want to win the grand finals. You want to pick one of the really high characters, and that can be kind of hard. And finally, 
winning against other high tiers doesn't matter as much as the audience if you win with a low tier. If you win, like, again, uh, Bowser versus a Sheik, if you win with that, people will be pretty impressed that you win with Bowser, a pretty mid-low tier character that people aren't thinking is too good. But if you win Sheik versus Sheik, once again, people just won't be as impressed. The free match overall, high tiers, they're a lot better. You can pretty much win more, beat all the tournaments, but at the same time, most of the negatives will come from people just not liking you as much, which may not be all the time, but most of the time in my experience and from watching streams and stuff and just the overall experience. So, really you have to decide if it's worth winning, it's, it's worth uh, doing all that stuff, which I think most of the time it is. I think picking a high tier most of the time is very good, it lets you be the best you, but that's all up to you and it depends if you really like the praise and stuff. But, hope you guys enjoyed, if you did, make sure to like, comment, tell me what I did miss, I know I did miss a ton of stuff, just like in the last video. Tell me in the comment section below, you guys have been very helpful last time, and we'll just see what happens. Thank you guys for watching though, and I'll see you all next time.